Hello from Jonathan and from me, welcome to the programme. Seven prolific burglars are behind bars this evening after committing scores of crimes across three counties. The gang that called themselves the Nighttime Creatures and set some of their crimes to music were responsible for stealing more than £335,000 worth of goods. Suffolk Police said the level of offending showed a blatant disregard for the law and other people. Well, Matthew Hudson was in court today and he joins us now from Stanton, near Bury St Edmunds, one of the villages targeted by this gang. Matthew, this is pretty brazen stuff. Brazen, certainly the word for it. Yes, Stanton had the dubious honour of being one of the places that was targeted and where homes were broken into. It was hardly alone in that. In Suffolk alone, more than 30 places, many of them small villages, were targeted by this gang. And when they targeted a place, there could be 5, 10, 15, 20 burglaries in a single night. There were also raids in neighbouring the counties. The gang is now behind bars. Uh, they've discovered after a good run of success as far as they were concerned that with so many things in life there is always a price to pay. They were a gang so brazen that members filmed some of their crimes and then set them to music. They also pictured themselves with some of the thousands of pounds they netted from a crime wave across three counties. But after their exploits sparked a major police investigation, their luck ran out. Today, seven of them were sent to jail. We're talking about 200 offences plus, and probably stolen to the value in excess of £335,000. Well, in uh, quite a lot of cases, the burglaries were carried out with the victims still in the premises, obviously had a devastating effect on those in individuals. The thieves, who all come from Ipswich, raided homes across Suffolk, North Essex and South Norfolk, including many in their own hometown. They broke into houses to steal property, then stole the owner's cars to use in more burglaries. All seven admitted conspiracy to burgle and steal. Paul Stevenson admitted 110 offences and was sentenced to a total of seven years. He did it because he wanted money and was bored. Daniel Pugh, who was 17 at the time, admitted to 70 offences and received five years' detention. He said he did it for fun. Daniel Fides received five years' detention for 41 offences. Just 18, he did it to fund his drug addiction. Paul Watchman was responsible for 10 offences and did it for money and thrills. He was jailed for two and a half years. Tom Nichols was just going with the crowd and received two years' detention. Tyron Brooks was funding his gambling habit. He admitted eight offences and got three years. Tim A. Denton admitted four offences and was jailed for three years and four months. After detailing the offences, Judge Peter Fenn told the defendants that behind that string of statistics lie a vast number of innocent victims whose lives have been severely disrupted by this criminality. It can take years to get over being burgled. Sometimes people never get over it and have to move house. This has happened in at least one instance in this case. Tina Rose knows what it feels like to have your house violated by burglars. A similar type of gang is believed to be behind the recent break-in at her Norwich home. All my life I've loved really lovely jewellery and I now feel as if I don't want to replace it. That doesn't seem worth having anything today worth, you know, valuable. Um, I even feel I could get rid of this bungalow and be quite happy in a rented council flat. After being arrested for some of the break-ins, Stevenson, Pugh and Fidesz were given bail and immediately carried on offending. Tonight, all seven are beginning jail terms. They'll have to serve at least half of them before being eligible for release. Well, Matt, some horrible crimes there that you detailed, but we're not talking about master criminals here, are we? Not at all, Jonathan. In fact, in some ways, they make the Lavender Hill mob look like the Brinks Mat gang. I mean, not only did they film themselves and then keep the images on their mobile phones, they left their DNA all over a great number of crime scenes. It was found on bottles that they're drunk from and half-eaten food. One of them even left a bail form with all his personal details on it in the back 
of a car that they had stolen. But it was complicated for the police because once they'd been arrested, as so often happens, they started to turn on each other. They were all blaming each other, trying to make sure that the largest part of the blame didn't attach to them. It would seem that, as in this case, again, as in so many other cases, there's no honour among thieves. Well, thanks very much for that. Now, teachers at a school in Northamptonshire have been on strike today over controversial plans to turn it into an academy. And it isn't just the staff at Western Fable School who are against the idea of private funding in state education. Union leaders and some pupils aren't happy either. The government insists academies raise standards. But are they the best way of improving the region's failing schools? Here's Claire McGlasson's report. The last resort and the last chance to make their case. In one week, Northamptonshire County Council will decide whether to go ahead with plans to turn Western Favel School into an academy. Today, teachers staged a strike to oppose the plans. The school closed to all but year 11. But some students chose to join the picket line. It's farcical, it's nonsense, it's, that it's not going to happen. There are lots of people here now who have said that this will be their last year teaching at this school if it does become an academy. What this is is a massive transfer of local resources into private hands and that on those grounds alone it's, it should be resisted. People chose this school for a reason. They sent their kids here because they want them to go to a public mixed state school. If we turn into academy then that's not what the parents want for their children. So what are academies? Schools are taken over and run by sponsors, whether private companies or charitable trusts. Hartsey School in Norwich, for instance, is run by a church group. The Holywell School in Ipswich is being taken over by a Swedish education provider. And the Northampton Academy is managed by an education charity. Academies have cost the government £5 billion in the past nine years. But it says they're no more expensive per school than standard comprehensives. So are they working? Yes, according to the government. It says GCSE results are improving more quickly in academies than in other schools. But no, according to a study by the London School of Economics. At the Thomas Deacon Academy in Peterborough, pupils were told the school would be run as a business and that they would be treated as employees. No playtime and a zero tolerance to bad behaviour. There are currently 23 academies in the region, five of those in Northamptonshire. The council says they're a good solution for failing schools. The academy route is a way of raising the standards. I mean, we really want children to achieve. If you've achieved 30 per cent, we're achieving 5A to C uh, GCSE results last year, and in fact that means 70 per cent have failed. That is not good enough. The academy does enable new money to come in to support the school and to give the pupils that much. You've got to, you have very little time when a child starts school to when it leaves. It sounds a long time, it actually isn't. And if they don't leave with the best qualifications, how are they going to excel maybe in further ed education or even going into the job market? The council will decide whether to go ahead with the plans a week today. The government says academies bring investment and expertise to the schools that need it most. But opponents say it's privatising education by the back door. Claire McGlasson, Anglian News, Northampton. Well, education very much in the news at the moment. Last night we brought you the debate about single-sex classes. Mm. And tonight, of course, academies. Yeah. Have you got an opinion on this? I bet you have if you're a parent. We'd love to hear it. Mm. Uh, you can contact us at the usual address. There it is, jonathanandbecky at itv.com. Now, moving on to a story.